slide as Greek debt risk continues to hang over the market. Oil prices falling the most in three weeks on concern the global economy recovery may falter. And President Obama says health care costs are among the biggest drags on the U.S. economy. We will go live to Washington for the latest from the summit. All right, welcome to Street Smart. We've got a terrific broadcast for you over the next two hours. Stocks down, but off their session lows. They have been under pressure as Greek debt concerns return to the market psyche. Komal Shri Kumar, the chief global strategist at TCW Group, will join us for his analysis of today's sell-off and much, much more. Absolutely. Then there are some, uh, or there is some movement, I should say, in Washington on financial regulatory reform. Virginia Senator Mark Warner joining us with exactly what he's recommending. And a different view on the sluggish economy and what it means for stocks when David Gertz of Highmark Capital joins us ahead and through the market's close. Definitely stay with us for that. All right, certainly will. Let's talk about the market trade right now. Just uh, less than an hour away from the close of trading. As Matt mentioned, stocks definitely off their worst levels of the day, down still about six tenths of one percent at 1098 on the S&P 500. Keep in mind, though, the Dow, which was down about 188 points at its lows, having that still a decline of about 85 points, but not looking as bad as it did throughout much of the session. 10,288 is the trade. And checking in on the NASDAQ, also lower, but again, off its worst levels, still down about half a percent at 2224. So what are the chances of Congress passing a financial regulation reform bill? Well, coming up at 323, we'll put that question to Senator Mark Warner of Virginia about his proposal for dissolving failure are failing, I should say, institutions. Then at 350, we will talk about what's going on in the markets today with David Gertz. He is Chief Investment Officer at Highmark Capital Management. Stay with us right here on Street Smart. We are back in just two minutes with more Bloomberg Television. From Bloomberg World Headquarters in New York, this is Street Smart with Carol Masser and Matt Miller. All right, back at 14 minutes after. More Americans than expected filed first-time claims for unemployment benefits last week. Initial jobless claims rose to 496,000. That is the highest level in three months, according to the Labor Department. We're going to take a quick break now. We are. We're going to talk about state budgets around the country, bleeding red ink. So why should states keep funding some of the biggest universities? We'll put that question to Jonathan Cole. He's got a new book out. Joining us at 444. Stay with us for that. We are back in two minutes with more here on Bloomberg. All right, good Thursday afternoon. I'm Matt Miller. You're watching Street Smart. Let's get a recap of some of the biggest stories that we are following this afternoon. For that, we bring in our own Gigi Stone. Gigi? Thanks, Matt. U.S. stocks are falling, sending the S&P 500 to its biggest drop in three weeks. This after Moody's Investor Service said it may downgrade Greek debt. Also, after reports on jobless claims and manufacturing orders disappointed economists. Commodities are also falling today. Crude oil falling the most in three weeks on concerns. The global economic recovery may falter and crimp the growth in energy. Energy demand. Meanwhile, copper hit its lowest price in more than a week as the rising dollar reduced the appeal of metals as an alternative investment. And a snowstorm in New York City today forcing airlines to cancel hundreds of flights. Forecasters calling for 7 to 13 inches of snow. They say the storm may linger into the weekend. Additional winter storm warnings have been issued for a swath of the Northeast from Maine down to Maryland. Carol, back to you. I know. All right, we are headed for another break on this very snowy Thursday. It's about 35 minutes after. Coming up, we'll take a look at how health care reform might affect the outlook for biotech companies. And then at 350, the major U.S. stock index is under pressure today. We'll talk about what's going on with David Gertz, Chief Investment Officer at Highmark Capital Management, and get his outlook for the economic recovery. It's a unique one, so stay with us right here on Street Smart. We're back in two minutes. From Bloomberg World Headquarters in New York, this is Street Smart with Carol Masser and Matt Miller. One area unlikely to feel much effect from any proposed health care legislation is biotech. Flighterer. Flighterer is the name of the German company there. They like the bonds. We're going to take a break. We're we back are in indeed. Minutes. We're going to talk about the close, everybody. From Bloomberg World Headquarters in New York, this is Street Smart with Carol Masser and Matt Miller. Inflation looks to be uh, subdued. Uh, we're not expecting uh, inflation to rise significantly in, in the near or medium term. 
All right, everybody, Fed Chairman Ben Bernanke speaking about inflation earlier today in Washington. There are less than 10 minutes remaining until today's closing bell. Helping us to break down today's market moves, we have trader Michael Gurkha of Empower Global Fund, standing by live at the Chicago Board Options Exchange. Also with us is David Gertz, the Chief Investment Officer at Highmark Capital Management. David, let's start with you. Those <laughs> All right, and that sounds a little <laughs> peculiar, but believe it or not, everybody, that's actually the closing The bell. duck is ringing the bell. <laughs> there he is. You can't make this stuff up, can you? All right, so that is our closing quack, if you will, on this Thursday, February 25th. Should we hear it again? Hopefully not. I think we're done. All right. Hallelujah. All right. Let's take a look at the markets because we definitely are finishing off our worst levels of the day. S&P 500, a decline of just about two points. So really significantly uh, off those uh, lows that we saw. Uh, S&P at 1103 here at the close. Checking on the Dow Jones Industrial Average, it was down about 188 points at its lows. Here at the close, a decline of 50 points, down about half a percent at 10,324. This was, of course, after we had a rally yesterday. And let's check in on the NASDAQ. There you have it, 22.34, a decline of about 1.7 points. Let's call that pretty much flat here on the NASDAQ. We're going to take a quick break now. When we come back, uh, what do barcodes and scanners have in common? I guess they're both used at the grocery store, but they were developed at our nation's universities. Professor Jonathan Cole says we need to safeguard those institutions. He'll be here to tell us why at 444. What do barcodes and scanners have in common? As you said, we can find them in supermarkets. That's right. <laughs> Take a break, everybody. When we come back, Toyota's president, Akia Toyota, meets with Transportation Secretary Ray LaHood following his testimony yesterday before Congress. We'll find out how that went. And Chinese IPOs are suffering their longest slump in at least five years. We'll find out why coming up right here on Street Smart. I'm Carol Masler. This is Street Smart on Bloomberg. Let's get you caught up on the headlines we're following at this hour. U.S. stocks fell across the board today. A late day rally, though, in the S&P 500 failed to erase all of the losses, but brought back about half of them. Now, stocks were weighed down by Moody's, saying it may downgrade Greek debt, and also on reports that jobs and manufacturing orders trailed forecasts. The Obama administration may expand efforts to ease the housing crisis by banning all foreclosures on home loans unless they have been screened and rejected by the government's Home Affordable Modification Program. This is according to a Treasury Department document obtained by Bloomberg. A Treasury spokeswoman says it is just one of many ideas under consideration. And a snowstorm hitting New York City today. That's a live shot right outside our studio. Check it out, everybody. This snowstorm forcing airlines to cancel hundreds of flights. Forecasters are calling for 7 to 13 inches of snow. They say the storm may linger into the weekend. Additional winter storm warnings have been issued for a swath of the Northeast from Maine down to Maryland. Matt We're going to take a quick break here. When we come back, we'll talk about the Olympics. We are. You know, the Vancouver, Vancouver game is really kind of sparking more interest than the last round of Winter Olympics. We'll tell you how many viewers are tuning in. We'll get to that a little bit later on. And I may give you the GMAC story as well. Stick with us here on Street Smart. We'll be back in two minutes. I wouldn't count on it. All right, some breaking news coming from Jamie Dimon making some comments. Obviously, the uh, CEO of J.P. Morgan, what's interesting is he's saying that he would like to reinstate a dividend quote soon. All right, we're going to take a quick break here on Bloomberg. We come back as financially crippled states cut costs. Will education and research take a hit? Research the key there. We'll talk with Jonathan Cole when we come back. You're watching Street Smart with Carol Masser and Matt Miller on Bloomberg Television. All right, we're back on Street Smart. When most people think about universities, well, they think about education. But our next guest says their impact on the economy just as important. Joining us right now to talk about this, Jonathan Cole, professor at Columbia University and author of a new book, The Great American University, Its Rise to Preeminence. It's an indispensable national role and why it must be protected. Professor Cole, great to have you here it's on Street Smart. great to be Smart. here. We're going to take a break. When we come back, talking about the Olympics. Stick around. We're back in two minutes' time. Turning now to our State of the State segment, and once again, we focus on the financial troubles of my own home state, New Jersey. And the safety of keeping sharks 
in tanks and malls. Note to self, maybe not such a good idea to have a shark tank <laughs> in a mall. I just kind of imagine the shark <laughs> flailing around and grabbing onto people, but that didn't happen, <gasps> fortunately. And that's all Everybody's we have for okay. today. Tomorrow is Friday. We're going to wrap up this edition of Street Smart. Thanks so much for joining us. Have a good night, a safe night if there's snow near you.